fashion, of course, plays a very important part here. And, and, and I don't know for you whether when these things come up, whether they're a huge challenge or whether it's just a pure joy when you can blast out the Ramones and, and try and figure out what this character should be and what they might be by dressing them. Yeah, it's more number two than number one. It's, um, uh, it's, it's a challenge, but it's not an unsurmountable challenge. It's, uh, you know, it's a, it's a project. You figure it out. You apply your, um, you know, your tools of your mind, your logic, your rational thinking, uh, your deduction, and uh, you read a script, you meet the people, and you put it together. You've had a, a, a It's like you like to cook, it's like you make a nice meal, it's kind of the same process. You know your ingredients, you know how much to combine with what, and you have a beautiful dinner. I was going to say you've had a, quite a, a, a long and illustrious career. I think 1952, you, you did costume designer assistant on the Guiding Light episode. You opened up your first boutique in 1966 in Greenwich Village. You've been Emmy, you've won an Emmy, you've been Oscar nominated. You, uh, they, you've been credited with the, the, the leggings craze in the 1970s. There's so many different aspects to this. And yet, here's a movie that at its core, in a way, is sort of saying that, that this desire for fashion is almost a disease in some people, that it's actually a, you know, a negative thing. I don't know if that's something you, you've recognized in that for some people it's it's just too much of an obsession? Oh, I don't know. I think in our society we have a tendency to, you know, make everything a bit too serious than it really is. And um, for me, fashion and getting dressed, it's expressing yourself, making yourself feel good. You look pretty, you want to stay in shape. You know, it's, it's a way of having fun and expressing who you are and uh, I think the only time it becomes not, when it becomes so-called ugly is, you know, when women or men, people really don't think about it that much and just sort of run and put something on because they saw it in a magazine or they saw somebody else wearing it and then there's really no interest or originality involved in it and so no matter what you pay for it, you're really not going to look special in it. I guess in a way now, in the last 10 years has been an incredible kind of run of success with Sex and the City and Ugly Betty and Devil Wears Prada and that that kind of career that's, that's come along in, in such a forceful way in the last 10 years. Do you feel when, when, when you met Sarah Jessica Parker on the, on, uh, in 1995 for the Miami and Rhapsody movie, did you kind of sense it then that this was a whole new world that was opening up or was it just a gradual thing as Sex and the City took off that you were suddenly in this... Uh... Yeah, when I met Sarah Jessica to do Miami Rhapsody, uh, the, the thing was like, we, I mean, I, I liked working with her. She knew she had her opinions, which I like. You know, um, I can, I prefer that to somebody with absolutely no opinion. Um, but I think you know, neither of us really, you know, had a thought of Sex in the City at that point and what it became. It just, I look at Sex in the City. It's like a good-handed poker. You know, all the cards are good. So you win. Um, the timing included as a card. Uh, the casting, the storyline. That you know, it all came together, and it was a winner. At so much to a point that it kind of started that genre of fashion movies. But I think the timing had a lot to do with it because um, I think people wanted to have fun and get escape and watch something a little bit unrealistic, but. But you sort of like comfort food. Um, it was the timing, very much so, because the decade before you would have never had a success in this type of movie. Everything was much more realistic and angst and like thirty something and those kinds of shows. Cool. I think people would, you know, they just wanted to 